And uh, now let's watch the footage as lava had been flooding Grindavik Road north of the town. This is from Icelandic News as it's been moving to the west north of Grindavik. Now, uh, somewhere in this place, lava damaged uh, high voltage lines the electrical supply to Grindavik, but cold and hot water pipes survived because it had been buried in the ground. Now you can see the map of lava flows and how far lava went to the west, very narrow uh, lava flow. And as you see to the north, lava has already made it to the uh, Blue Lagoon Road, there to the north, so it's just touched it went over right next to the walls. So, two roads had been destroyed by the lava. And here you see the eruption, eruptive fissure when it started uh, from Icelandic news. Uh, a lot of people were naturally shocked to see how fast lava flowed and how quickly it took out these roads. The gun already and it had already damaged the high voltage pipes into Grindavik, as you see here. But they will be fixed rather quickly. Luckily, hot water and cold water pipes had been buried deep in the ground and they're safe. And now we are watching the erupting fissure from Silingafat, somewhere in the middle between um, Hagafat and Storaskogafat. Here you see the cone from March which erupted back on the 16th of March and lava is uh, erupting right next to it, not quite uh, in the same crater but close to it. So it's kind of uh, found the way to the surface right next to the former cone and here you see the other former cone which is also shooting lava. So it's more or less the same location, nearly the same location where we have we had seen eruption back in March. And now I'll go over the latest update from Icelandic Met Office, which was published two hours ago. And they say that there is still considerable lava fontaining on the main part of the fissure, which is about 2.4 uh, kilometers long. So the fissure narrowed up to 2.4 kilometers. Now it's perhaps even less. Two hours later, maybe it's one kilometer long fissure. So activity subsided significantly. The eruptive fissure extends south of Hagafat and lava flows vigorously from there. Uh, not sure if it's still going, uh, if there is still activity there because it was published more than two hours ago. Um, and lava has flowed over the Grindavik road towards. Thorpiot and onwards alongside the lava barriers west of uh, Grindavik. <coughs> and it also flooded part of Nesweg Road that I showed you. Uh, a part of the lava uh, flow into the south flows into the fissure by Hagafat, where it flows underground before imagine just north of the lava barriers northeast of Grindavik, so it's using lava tunnels, it's a lot of subterranean movement, lava flows there. <coughs> Model calculations suggest that as of um, half past four o'clock today about 14 million cubic meters per second of magma has flowed from the magma reservoir beneath Schwarzangi towards Sunnukur Crater Rope and the rate, the rate of deformation has decreased considerably but magma continues to flow from the magma reservoir beneath Schwarzangi to the Sunnukur Crater Rope. And the earthquakes also subsided. We have much less seismic activity now comparing to some hours ago. Shortly before 4 o'clock explosive activity began within the magma came in contact with groundwater. You saw that. And uh, there is considerable uncertainty regarding the amount of gases from the eruption site tonight. 
the wind direction will change to the southwest and therefore gas pollution will be carried to the northeast and could be felt in the capital area tonight and tomorrow. Uh, so those are the latest updates from Iceland. Grindavik survived it and it's likely to survive uh, if activity drops down. This should be short-lived eruption couple of days I believe because most of the magma came out already and, uh, there wasn't that much well com relatively not big amount of magma 20,000 cubic meters is which is about one third of Mount Kaler and most of it like three part of it already spilled over 